It's the Stitches. Today we're not going to see alternative teens get TV makeovers to look normal, but rather we're going to talk about why it is that these shows always turn out so bad, regardless of whose personal style they're trying to change. Sure, some of these shows aren't as bad as others, but are they ever really good? Obviously just the concept of telling someone that their style is wrong and needs to be changed comes with a lot of baggage. Personally, I feel like you can help somebody refine their style without normalizing them or making them lose their chosen aesthetic, and that usually looks like teaching somebody basic design concepts. What shapes go together, what colors go together, how to mix patterns and embellishments and play to your personal strengths. But that is not not the approach that these shows usually take now, is it? The aesthetic that gets forced on show contestants is usually very generic, based on fleeting trends, and shows little to no personal emotion. And when this treatment is usually given to someone who usually wears the exact opposite, it's laughably bad. And we've been laughing together, as a community, letting it make us stronger instead of tearing us down. I'm proud for us. But why can't they just do it right? Why is it always so bad. Well, profits, ratings. I sincerely hope that I'm not the first person to tell you this, but TV is fake. A lot of it is straight up scripted and all of it is designed to fit a narrative. And I do mean designed. The show a guest shot might be completely different to the show that we actually get to see because a producer might have come up with a more interesting narrative in post. A TV show will go out of its way to give you the most dramatic version of a story possible, regardless of whether or not it's actually true. Because a more dramatic story holds our attention longer, generates higher ratings, which means more money made during commercial breaks. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure out that the more you sensationalize the story, the more we are grotesquely attracted to it. And the more we're fascinated by something, the easier it is to monetize it. This sometimes leads us down some pretty dark alleys. I think the majority of us were able to recognize the angry black woman stereotypes that were pushed on Alexa during her What Not To Wear episode. At first, they tried to play the savior angle. Poor black girl makes it off the streets, but only with the help of TLC's top stylists, mind you. And we saw the moment where she put her foot down and decided that she didn't want to go along with that narrative. I'm not into revisiting it so that other people can benefit off of it. So they did something much worse instead. Speaking of TLC, let's talk about predatory behavior behind the scenes and coaching. TLC is especially known to be pretty bad for this. Their tactics are pretty well known, but in the alternative community, or at least in the Kawaii and Lolita community, I think the most notorious example of this is the My Strange Addiction episode entitled I'm a living doll. Aside from one gentleman on that episode who maybe, possibly might have been a living doll, the guests on that episode did not know what they were being filmed for. My lights just decided to flicker. At least one of the guests thought that they were being filmed for a documentary series on Lolita fashion. Imagine their surprise when they saw what they were actually being filmed for. Lovely lore one of the YouTubers I stole my intro from, made her own video where she reacted to the My Strange Addiction episode and she talked about her own experiences being approached to be on the show. When I was approached by this company to be in a Lolita series, it was told to me that it was going to be a series of videos and it was documenting the lives of Lolitas, but their working title was I'm a Living Doll. And I was like, no, I can't be a part of anything that says I'm a living doll. I don't want living doll to be in whatever I'm in at all because I'm not a living doll. I had several email conversations with them. I had Skype calls with them and I tried to talk to them about what Lolita Fashion is and they were reaching out to other people in the community. At the time I lived in California so they were reaching out to like the LA community and everyone else was pretty much saying the same thing. At no point did they say that it was going to be My Strange Addiction. And then when it came out and I realized that it was that production, I was 
livid. I contacted them several times just asking why, why do they do this? How do they get away with it? And they tried to get me involved with something else. And I said, no, like, are you kidding me? Not after this. And they tried to reassure me that the other project, which I don't know what that other project ended up being. They tried to assure me that it wasn't that and that the whole My Strange Addiction thing, they claimed that they made a documentary and then they couldn't sell it to a company so they sold it to TLC and then they made it into My Strange Addiction. But I feel like they clearly knew from the beginning by the way that they were trying to intertwine Living Doll and coaching people to say Living Doll, that they knew the whole time that that's what they were doing. And I don't see why they would go out and make a production without the funding, without knowing where it was gonna go. Like, Let's talk about coaching. Lovely Lore describes it pretty well in her video when she discussed how interviews with TLC's team typically went. For me, when they were interviewing me, anytime I said Lolita fashion, they asked me to repeat it with doll fashion. And I was like, hell no, I'm not gonna repeat what I'm saying because what I'm saying is what I mean. Coaching happens during interviews so that the production team can get their chosen sound bites so that they can push their desired narrative. So now let's revisit what not to wear. A sound bite that they clearly coached Alexa into saying is they're bitches because, you know, angry black woman stereotype. I didn't end up showing it in my video because it was just really obnoxious, but they ended up playing that clip three times. But so, they're bitches. Because of a pain that was mine was taken. They're bitches. It was mine was taken. They're bitches. Three entire times they played that one sound bite. So it's no wonder that Lexa's local Lolita community made it clear on EGL that she did not appreciate how she was represented on that show and that she doesn't want to be connected with it now. The manipulation of guests is pretty obvious when you pay close enough attention, but even the hosts aren't exactly realistic portrayals of actual people. I could not bring myself to force you guys to watch the robot robotic interactions between the 100% hotter hosts. Their banter that you're supposed to read as quirky and relatable are just so obviously scripted and badly written at that. At what point do we admit that these people are just being paid to be convincing actors? Not stylists. In fact, I think several of these shows could benefit from just firing everyone and hiring paid actors instead and not even having real guests. In conclusion, reality TV is not reality. It couldn't be further from reality. When you watch any media, be critical of what you're consuming. Understand that what you see can be easily manipulated and is not the full story. There is so much more going on behind the scenes than what it is that we actually get to see. But I'm still going to make videos making fun of reality TV show makeovers because they're cringy. I genuinely like to cringe at their robotic attempts to portray real human emotion on screen. Also because just fuck anyone who tries to tell you what to wear. It's just clothes. It's genuinely not that serious. That's all for today's video. I just wanted to pop in and just make this information available. I hope everyone has a good day. I hope everyone watches TV with a critical eye, and I will see you all next time. Bye!